Most people may be wondering what this means in terms of when the 6th generation stealth fighter will actually arrive now that the Air Force has officially flown one. Perhaps 6th generation aircraft will be stealthier as numerous creative depictions of the plane show no tail fins or other vertical structures. Perhaps it will be faster and more maneuverable than its predecessors from the 5th generation. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we will be talking about American new F-22 Super Raptor. Before we get into the video, kindly note that the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. Without further ado, let's dive in. Although the F-22 Raptor Stealth Fighter is the best air superiority aircraft ever, it is not the best tool for safeguarding American interest in Asia. The United States Department of Defense plans to update the F-22 Raptor fleet of the United States Air Force in what could be the Stealth Fighter's most important upgrade ever. It's unclear what upgrades Lockheed will incorporate into the F-22. Improvements to the Raptor's stealth coding as well as updates to digital interface are possible. If all alternatives are used, the project is projected to take a decade to complete. Work is expected to be completed by October 31st, 2031, according to the Department of Defense. The U.S. Air Force is the only F-22 operator in the world with a fleet of 186 Raptors. However, the United States government prohibited the F-22 from being exported due to the so-called Obey Amendment to the 1998 Department of Defense Appropriations Act. The end of the Cold War conflicts followed the collapse of the Soviet Union combined with the export ban dramatically decreased the F-22 Raptor's production to less than 200 from a projected 750. The F-22 Raptor is essentially a bridging platform until the Air Force can field the next generation air dominance platform, according to Clinton Hanot, Air Force Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategy, Integration, and Requirements. The first F-22 prototype took to the skies in 1991, and the F-22 will be nearly 40 years old by the time this series of repairs and improvements are completed. Though the F-22 is unquestionably one of the best fighter jets in the world, it may be surpassed in the new future by a 6th generation aircraft, some of which have already flown. However, until the 6th generation fighters are widely available, America's flying branch will have to rely on their Raptors. The United States Air Force has begun work on integrating an infrared search and track sensor, or IRST, into its stealthy F-22 Raptor Air Supremacy Fighter. The IRST, a sensor that provides a significant capability to detect and track other aircrafts at long ranges, including stealthy ones, that is completely passive and immune to electronic warfare, was originally planned for the Advanced Tactical Fighter program, but it was ultimately dropped on the grounds of cost. At the very least, the service is considering how to reintroduce the capability into the jet. The Raptor carries six AIM-120 RMs and two AIM-9 Sidewinders in its air-to-air -air configuration. Surface-to-air missiles are an important capability of the F-22. The aircraft can carry two 1,000-pound GBU-32 Joint Direct Attack munitions internally in the air-to-ground configuration and will rely on onboard avionics for navigation and weapon delivery support. With the inclusion of an updated radar and up to eight small diameter bombs, the air-to-ground capability will be enhanced in the future. In the air-to-ground configuration, the Raptor will also carry two AIM-120s and two AIM-9s. The F-22 engines have more thrust than any other fighter engine currently in use. The F-22 can cruise at supersonic air speeds greater than 1.5 Mach without using afterburners thanks to its streamlined aerodynamic design and increased performance, a feature known as Super Cruise. The qualities of the F-22 create a synergistic effect that ensures the F-22A's lethality against any advanced air threat. Surface-to-air missile engagement envelopes are substantially reduced by the combination of stealth, integrated avionics, and supercruise, and opponent capabilities to track and engage the F-22 are greatly reduced. In a tactical situation, the combination of limited observability with supercruise emphasizes the belief of surprise. The aircraft is 62 feet or 18.9 meters in length, 16.7 feet or 5.1 meters in height, and has a 44.6 foot or 13.6 meter wingspan. It has a wavelength range of over 1600 nanometers. By weight, the F-22 is made up of 39% titanium, 24% composite, 16% aluminum, and 1% thermoplastic. 
Titanium is employed for its high strength to weight ratio in high stress regions, such as the bulkheads, as well as its heat resistant properties in the aircraft's hot parts. The fuselage frame doors, intermediate spars on the wings, and honeycomb sandwich construction skin panels are all made of carbon fiber composites. According to the F-22 program office, funding for other sectors not mentioned above may be considered. As previously stated, the initial F-22 was to be equipped with an advanced IRST at a time when such technology was uncommon in Western fighter aircraft. The pre-production F-22 Raptor, on the other hand, lacked an IRST. The sensor was one of a number of capabilities that were cut early in the development, including side-looking airborne radar arrays that would have been mounted on the sides of the jet's diamond-shaped nose. It's difficult to imagine how an IRST sensor could be fitted into today's F-22. The Raptor's carefully controlled low observable features might be disrupted if an additional pod was added. Internal installation of the sensor is a possibility, but it would likely necessitate a considerable rebuild that would have to take into account the affluences of changes on the aircraft's total radar signature. Then there's the matter of whether the IRST's originally designated interior space, as well as enough cooling, is still available given that a series of in-service improvements have put these locations in high demand. In 2017, Ken Merchant, then Vice President of Lockheed Martin's F-22 program, told Air Force Magazine that we just don't have the real estate to integrate an internal IRST in the plane, at least not in configuration comparable to the F-35's electro-optical targeting system. One possibility is to incorporate IRST-like capabilities into one of the F-22's current sensors, the AN-AAR-56 Missile Launch Detection System, or MLD. This technology now enables a 360-degree detection of aerial and surface launch guided missile threats to the Raptor pilot. The MLD system, which is mounted on the aircraft's skin and includes six sensors hidden by low observable windows, is made up of a network of optical components and assemblies. The ANAAR-56 is a little-known system on the F-22, and its specific capabilities are unknown. However, it is likely to have some latent austere IRST-like capability. But the system is well established, and additional components based on cutting-edge technology might potentially add a more comprehensive infrared search and track capability, allowing it to follow numerous aircraft and missile targets beyond visual range. Even with the latest sensor technology, improving the system for longer-range infrared detection and tracking capabilities would result in a different degree of capability than what supplied by a specialized advanced IRST. However, the technology is already present in every Raptor, and it would provide a 360-degree field of coverage that a typical IRST would not be able to deliver. In fact, increasing the MLD on the F-22 would be an excellent complement to a fully-fledged IRST. The benefits that a specialized IRST sensor would offer to the F-22 are considerably more clear. The Lockheed Martin ANAAQ-33 Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod is not carried by the F-22 unlike many other Air Force tactical jets. Although this pod is typically utilized for precise air-to-ground strike and reconnaissance missions, it can also be used for long-range visual air-to-air -air identification. This is a very valuable skill that allows for high-confidence friend or foe operations over long distances at any time of day or night. The pod does feature a pseudo-IRST capability, so it can be used as a poor man's IRST capable of detecting airplanes across long distances. But yet again, this pales in comparison to the capabilities of a dedicated low-wavelength IRST designed from the ground up for air-to-air -air combat and equipped with all the necessary back-end processing capability and software to fully exploit its capabilities, much alone completely integrate them with the aircraft's fighting system. With a current IRST sensor, such as the IRST-21, based one found in Legion Pod, the Raptor pilot would be able to quickly discover and track several targets well beyond visual range. The sensor would provide additional targeting data, allowing an opponent to be targeted passively without the jet's radar emitting any telltale emissions, which would be particularly beneficial for a stealth fighter. In addition to these types of stealthy engagements, the IRST's targeting data could be combined with data from the F-22's other highly capable sensors such as its outstanding passive electronic support measure suite 
as well as data from other platforms to improve accuracy and overall situational awareness of the air combat arena. As the Air Force and the United States military in general focuses more on the high-end threats presented by China and Russia, adding an IRST to its most proficient fighter would prove an additional advantage. Its worth would be realized in the face of a more sophisticated adversary, one that is likely to utilize powerful electronic warfare capabilities, potentially impairing radar and even data link capability. However, the AN-APG-77 ASA radar possesses some of the best low probability of intercept capabilities of any radar in the world, making it difficult for hostile sensors to detect it, let alone geolocate it. Moreover, the spectrum of aerial threats that an IRST would assist the F-22 in acquiring and engaging plays a role in these high-end situations. A sophisticated IRST can identify objects that radars can't, such as stealthy fighters, drones, bombers, and even cruise missiles, all of which are dangers that could increasingly be confronted in a conflict with China or Russia. IRST, of course, is effective against all non-stealthy varieties as well. Some would argue that mounting an example of the Legion pod to an F-22 is worth it, even if it reduces the ability of one or two Raptors within a flight of numerous jets to conceal from hostile radars. The pod-equipped aircraft could seamlessly share their targeting data with the rest of the flight via aircraft proprietary data link, which is extremely difficult to jam. And tactics could be devised to reduce the risk to the IRST-equipped Raptors while also leveraging the unique information they would provide. As the F-22 seeks to stay relevant in the face of fast-changing peer threats, this type of compromise appears to be within the works in different ways. F-22s can patrol at altitudes of up to 60,000 feet, providing them an incredible line of sight well above the weather and in extremely cold air, which is ideal for an IRST. With this in mind, finding a way to install one internally, or perhaps using one of the internal AIM-9X rails to selectively deploy an IRST as needed, might be a highly worthwhile investment if an external option was deemed unsuitable. The Air Force is reconsidering its plans to equip F-22s with an IRST, indicating that the sensor could provide even more value to the fighter, even as the service begins to consider a future without the Raptor. Now assuming the technological challenges can be addressed, the F-22 might very likely see out its career with some type of IRST capability, giving it one of the primary characteristics the Air Force had planned for it from the very start. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos.